everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Point of Experience podcast. I am your host, Paul Castro Jr. And I am joined with... And I'm Joe. Joe! Joe! Not your average Joe, but a Joe none your, none, none your the less. I See, I want to go with a boring name, but I don't. I, I feel like I don't want to go with the other name. I, I'll find my, my, my rhythm. Um, so we got a really, really fun guest uh, today, somebody who I was, uh, when I saw the confirmation we were going to get them, I nearly, um, nearly had an accident, you know, in, uh, in of, of the, of the, of the bathroom kind. Uh, who, who are we going to be joined by? Stop making him wait. It's Sung Won Cho. Oh my God. AKA Pro ZD, awesome, amazing voice actor, YouTuber. We, Just we, we learn. Chill dude. <laughs> Chill is uh, beyond what we could. He, I, I feel like he is just a, a real master of of his crafts, multiple. That's plural. He is uh, an extremely successful YouTuber with four million subscribers, uh, or nearly four million subscribers on his YouTube channel, Pro ZD. Um, he is a, an extremely accomplished voice actor, working in titles like Borderlands, Craig of the Creek, the Yakuza Lost Judgment series, uh, Akudama Drive, Tuka and Birdie. He's worked uh, with Rooster Teeth, um, Crunchyroll, and Rocket Jump on the live action series Anime Crimes Division. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, an, an insanely talented guy. Uh, we we talk about some of the um, the stuff he he how he got started doing uh, uh, YouTube, how he started in voiceover, advice for people looking to start their own channels, uh, some of the, his his resilience into practicing for for multiple years before he even landed his first pro- professional gig. Um, yeah, we, we 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 really cover a lot of ground here. Um, whether or not it's helpful to to uh, be a fan of these things. Um, what else did we talk about? Am I am I am I losing my my train of thought here? I feel like we just covered so much ground. It's basically a treasure trove of awesome information about the industry, um, different titles, different things going on, and just it's just nice to see two successful people riffing off each other about. That stuff. Yeah, Joe, it was really great to see you and uh, Sung Won, you know, just riffing with each other about that. I, listen, you if you want to call me successful, it's got to be – it's all got to be attributed to my work as uh, um, Clifford the Big Red Dog in the PBS's uh, online video games. That's what people most notably know me for. But Sung Won, on the other hand, uh, so much great stuff that he's, he's worked on and it has been um, – Gosh, if you're a fan of board games, we 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 dive into some of that as well. Uh, the, the the best board game for you and your friends to to play, and um, advice for anybody who's looking to break into the to the voice acting scene or trying to become uh, an actor. So stick around for this episode of the Points of Experience podcast because it's going to be a fun one. Sung Won Cho, thank you so much uh, for doing this show with us. Uh, we, we are so excited. Uh, <laughs> my cousin is actually a huge fan of yours. He kind of put me on to your YouTube channel, everything. I remember him saying, like, you know, oh, you know who follows you on Twitter? It's Pro ZD Follows. You have him on the show. So, obviously, Joe, huge fan here, helped uh, and kind of uh, pursue, help pursue getting you on here. So, we're so thankful that you've agreed to do this. And hopefully, there's no more technical complications because we had a couple of these uh leading up sure. to the show and we won't have to have the fire drill happen and 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 us have to run out of the apartments here oh <laughs> uh, yeah i will that has actually happened before during no like kidding. a podcast like uh no joke like fire alarm went off i we had to go <laughs> stand outside for like 20 minutes so oh my gosh fingers crossed i guess yes yeah. fingers crossed uh for those of you who don't know uh some of sung one's uh work he has worked in the yakuza game series uh something that we both share obviously bell as well but also a gretsuko fire emblem your own live action series um i mean god of war coming up very soon there's just you, you've worked on so many uh, prolific titles. You are a tremendous talent, not only as a voice actor, but also as a content creator. Your your YouTube channel, ProZD, you almost have 4 million followers or subscribers, I guess, on YouTube. Where did 
before the YouTube stuff, where did the love for performing happen? Because you obviously perform in a lot of your skits. I mean, did you always want to be an actor? Did you have a desire to be kind of in the limelight in family videos? Or where did that love for acting kind of start for you? Uh, for me, I never really was obsessed with the limelight so much as it was uh i wanted to do voice acting uh since mm. high school uh i a friend of mine who's still a good friend of mine to this day uh used to write these radio plays uh and he would just get all his friends to do the voices and everything and that was my first moment where i really fell in love with the acting uh side of it like I, as a child, had a lot of interest in voice actors actually growing up. Um, I used to um, read the credits, you know, see who was voicing who, and also um, have like an almost like encyclopedic knowledge of like, if I could, if I heard a performance, uh, I could just go, that's so-and-so, that's Jeff Bennett, that's Kath Susie, that's so on and so forth. So, uh, but I never necessarily envisioned myself doing it until... I think high school that was when I got that bug of really feeling like I was um uh was sure. the character or whatever that for that first time. And that's why I really did you do got like it. theater in high school? Is that kind of where all that started? Uh I didn't do theater in high school actually. Um uh, it was all in high school it was all just through my friends stuff. Uh in college I did some like I was in the media arts and technology major, so that involved a lot of audio and video. And so I did do some like performing here and there for like projects and other people's projects and um, for like uh, live multicam or something. I would do acting in that too. But no, I've actually never done any theater uh, with the exception of like grade school plays. Oh, no kidding. Well, that's kind of very similar to me either. I didn't get started until college. But, you know, I, I kind of want to give you a, a compliment mm. here right now. Most people, when I think uh, it, it happens a lot with voice actors who have a, a deeper voice, they go, or just people pursuing voice actors, they go, you, you have such a great voice. You sound so good. Uh, like the, the mm. resonance in your voice, it, it's so great. But one of the things I think I notice with you is that you the way you sound normally like sure. this is is not necessarily how all of your characters sound. And you have tremendous range and depth, but also you have such great character. There's a uniqueness to each one of these characters, creatures, mm. people that you are portraying. And it, and it comes across in almost everything you do. There's such nuance in what you do. And obviously you have a great voice and you are extremely talented at using it and, and, and manipulating your voice, but you really create such good mm. character. And we don't see that a lot, I think, with uh, aspiring voice actors. We see people just thinking, okay, I have a great voice. I, I, I should be successful in this. And that's, as we both know, often not the case. You have to be talented. You have to know how to act. You have to know how mm -hmm. to be able to craft these characters. Mm -hmm. And you do that so wonderfully, so beautifully. It's, it's quite impressive, and I, I admire it. And... Uh, obviously, I've done a lot of my my homework on you specifically, and in, in, in terms of how you got started, you know, doing Vine mm, and and doing right. um, you know your 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 short videos and stuff. And what I'm curious with you is: is there a a process that you do a, a certain way that you approach each character, regardless of the way that you think that they'll sound, to get to that point where they are so nuanced and full of life and feel like a three dimensional. Uh, character, creature, dragon, whatever it might be, is do you have a specific way of of approaching these characters mm. and making them seem so unique and real? I think for me, when um, when it comes to developing like uh, a performance, it, it, a lot of it just uh, comes down to feeling as natural as the character as possible. Um, so. Uh, I think there is mm. there are some actors that might approach it from from a very technical uh, sort of stance, which is not a bad way to tackle it. You know, like really nailing down like the exact voice or whatever beforehand and the mannerisms or whatever. I find for me, it's more so like uh, sure. just the, the more I can feel fully immersed within the role without worrying too much like about 
you know, oh, how do I sound? Like, obviously, subconsciously, I'm doing that, you know, just through experience. Um, but I think for me, yeah, I find a lot of, you know, going with your gut, you know, following your instincts, you know, that uh, helps me a lot in um, getting into into a role. Um, and it's funny you mentioned, you know, people compliment, mm. compliment my voice, which, yes, I do get a lot of compliments about, you know, oh, very nice, you know deep voice and such but um uh you are very correct in that not only does that not really mean anything unless you have the acting chops to, to back it up um but i think a lot of people are often surprised uh by some of the characters that i play like i i um you would maybe listen to me and think oh you know he's just gonna play like very deep voice characters or very you know the same time and i do play deep voice characters but uh i um, have often surprised people when they uh, didn't realize a certain character was me. So does it excite you when you get the opportunity or you get a, a casting breakdown or a bunch of packets sent to you with different characters to look at the characters that you wouldn't normally get, you know, uh, based off your voice, like whether it's a younger character or a squeaky mouse character, something that if you just listen to you talking in conversation mm -hmm. you're like all right that's not necessarily the way i see someone um or the way your agents or the casting office see so does it mm. like excite you to get the opportunity to play these characters to uh that aren't necessarily so close to home in your register uh to get that opportunity to play those i do enjoy that yeah uh getting to uh um try stuff that people wouldn't normally expect is fun in its own way uh so absolutely i i do enjoy getting to play all sorts of characters so having started on youtube and creating this goliath of not only a hysterical channel but also informational because of all of the, uh, the reviews you do and everything but a lot of your early work is you kind of performing skits and i mean it's been i guess i don't know what like 10 years now for you having worked on this channel do you feel having had that interest in creating a, a YouTube channel or doing these skits is uh, where you were able to kind of find your your skill as an actor or your range or to transform yourself or to really kind of make things seem believable for, you know, making the, the skits that much more funny? Is that where that kind of started? I would say I got more experience slash practice from the tumblr days mm. actually because tumblr a lot of that early stuff was pure audio no video at all so a lot of it was you know creating the soundscape creating the voices all from scratch uh um i think that really exponentially helped me improve in a very short amount of, not a very short amount of time maybe like a god yeah, like four i think i did like four four years of that uh i did four uh, and uh, you said you did your research but yeah for oh, yeah. those of you watching or listening who don't know i i started the voice acting tumblr and right after graduating from college and i made an audio post every day for years i did not miss a single day uh for i want to say three at least three years straight uh <laughs> 2012 three or four years i didn't miss a beat uh, even when I and, I, and nobody knew who I was at all. You know, this was starting from absolute zero in terms of audience. It was, ne I, I never anticipated it ever getting to a point where people would care or know anything about me. It was just me uh, just going, well, I want to do voice acting. I don't know how to get into that. <laughs> I guess I just got to start doing it and getting better at it. And sure see where it goes and uh i think a lot of people um uh, like sort of my fellow peers in the industry now who are also big nerds like me and i'm assuming probably maybe there are some similarities with you oh, yeah. also I'm, I'm i'm curious to hear your you know how you got into it but a lot of people started like i did you know doing stuff online like doing fan stuff doing all you know just meeting other people that way and doing indie games and you know it all sort of just it's you people when, when you show that you can do it you know people start to go oh i know that guy and then they you know recommend you for other things um so yeah i would say uh, you, uh by youtube um it wasn't so much by that point i think i was like 
uh, quote unquote ready. Uh, uh, I think around the time YouTube took off for me was around the time I signed with my agent. Mm. So uh, it wasn't like YouTube helped me get there. It was Tumblr really like because in the beginning of Tumblr days, I was terrible. Like, I, you know, like oh, I didn't, you know, I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. Sure. And I uh, uh, just sort of taught myself on the fly. Uh, and just doing something every day, you know, that that helped me improve. So uh, so do you think that that kind of accountability that you were creating for yourself, you know, the pressure of, of doing something every day, is that where the desire to do that, that Tumblr was so that you were kind of putting yourself out there for the world to see and being like, okay, now everyone's going to see this. So I don't want to look like a fool or just for yourself to kind of create kind of like a, a journal entry or a diary to kind of look back and see how much better you've gotten? Uh, is that where that started? Kind of both. It was accountability because, you know, I declared I was going to do it, right? Uh, and so if I was just doing it on my own and declared it to, and didn't say anything to anybody, then there is no accountability. I can just, in a week, I'm like, ah, I don't feel like doing it. Then I'll stop. Uh, so having uh, the Tumblr to, um, you know, post it every day and then it's kind of nice to see you know you look back on a month and you're like oh i really did do that for a month and then you just do that for two months and then you do it for a year and then uh i i found that you know when people oh god oh, there it is oh god <laughs> there it is there oh it my is. gosh uh it's the, there is 2020 12 is the first post wow uh, yep october 2012 yeah Ten years. Please don't play any of them yeah, for the no, love no, of no, God. Don't, don't but, play them, but uh, but they are still but they are still up. They are. St I keep it up intentionally, uh, just because I'm like you know you know you know what it's all there and you can just yeah it's it's all there. Uh, well, it's very admirable, I think, to have that there as a resource for other voice actors to see, like, this is one of the most successful voice actors in the industry. Look at the hard work that was required to put in, you know, kind of like, uh, is it Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours or whatever? Like, that is that is there for people to see that this was not a mistake. It didn't happen overnight. For anybody who dare question, be like, I know this guy from YouTube. Why? Oh, it must be because his success as a YouTuber that he's getting these opportunities as a voice actor. No, I, th there is clear uh, identifiable proof that anybody can look at to see like this was uh, uh, no mistake and it takes kind of that hard work resilience every day to wake up and just talk into your microphone and get better hear yourself and figure out ways to improve so obviously for you having the tumblr and and doing your 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 voice a day and in and, and transitioning to vine eventually with your skits that stuff was super tremendous and giving you accountability to to get better and improve do you think there is a similar resource for aspiring voice actors today should they be doing something similar on TikTok or anywhere else? Do you think that that is helpful for people? Is that the version of it for I think today? It, I think anything helps, honestly. Like TikTok, uh, I don't I don't have TikTok, but uh, I know it's popular with the youngins. Oh yeah. But yes, like I I do seriously think that putting stuff out on TikTok, putting stuff out on Twitter, on YouTube, on all this stuff, just showcasing, you know, what you can do is like unless you know unless you're doing something really offensive or controversial, but yeah. otherwise <laughs> it's a net positive. You're showing, you know, you're not only are you showing maybe like, you know, your range or what you can do, but uh, if you showcase, like you can do funny stuff, like some people are really looking for that. You know, they want someone who's like, you know, maybe more quick witted or, you know, has some good improv skills or things like that. I mean, I saw, um, it wasn't super long ago, like, you know, Sarah Jane Sherman, you know, who's a, uh, casting director and voice director she she was like yeah you know just make 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 tiktoks like make stuff like sure uh it can only help you especially if you if no one knows who you are and you're trying to like sort of get your foot in the door uh yeah that's how you can get your foot in the door like we we live in this age where you know if you if you are lucky you that is one possible way to get you know uh get noticed uh mm. of course you still have to be good <laughs> but um <laughs> but if you are good at 
you know, good at it and you get, you know, attention with that, uh, it's, uh, it's again, it's only a net, a net positive, you know? Oh, sure. And, and being good is kind of a given nowadays. There's just so much competition that exists in the voiceover world that if you are not phenomenal to begin with then the odds are so stacked against you because you're you're going up i say this all the time you're going up against the best everybody is getting if you have an, an agent you're going up against the the number one talent in the game so you have to have your shit together and you know that same thing can be said for uh, mm -hmm. creating a YouTube channel. It is such a saturated market; it is nearly impossible to kind of set yourself apart. And you have to have sure. consistency, keep putting Absolutely. things out. And one of the videos for you that really caught my eye, just how funny you are and how uh, much you get it, and your kind of hand is on the pulse, is uh, uh, your Magic the Gathering <laughs> video, where it's like the longest Magic the Gathering turn in history. And I played a ton of Magic growing up, and I'll never forget there was an instance where there was a guy, he was it was, it was a Tolarian Academy deck, I remember that much, or whatever he was doing, he was like, okay, I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna play this, and I'm gonna tap 10, up to 20, up to 30, mm. up to 30, 40, got 50 mana, 9,000 damage, you're dead. <laughs> and when you did that video, I'm, I'm assuming you've played Magic before or you have experience I with actually, it. I actually, I've played it, but I'm actually not like an avid Oh, no player. kidding. Well, no. E either way, it yeah. is it is absolutely hysterical. It is perfect. It is right on the on the mark for that community mm, and yeah. obviously other similar card games like Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff. Um, was, was that a video that you had made for Vine at the time? Um, because m my question is... A, a lot of those videos that you were creating were, were very short clips that became so humongous and have tremendous views. Was that created intentionally for Vine and then you move those over to YouTube? Is that a strategy of yours or was that you, you did that with the YouTube shorts thing? What's the, 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 the process for that? That specific video is uh, a YouTube original. Uh, like anything, all the ones that are just like seven seconds and mm -hmm. like a square, those are all the Vine ones that I uploaded, but... Uh, anything anything longer is YouTube. Sure. Uh, and that one in particular, uh, even though I'm not an avid Magic the Gathering player, I play a lot of board games, a lot of card games. So I'm very familiar with like, you know, combos and, you know, obnoxious strategies and things like that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's where that came from. Uh, I have played Magic a couple times, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I miss it. It's one of the things during the pandemic that I think I've longed for the most is I want to get into a card shop and, and just start playing face-to-face -face with people. Magic the Gathering Around Online is wonderful and Hearthstone, all that stuff is great, but something about being face-to-face -face with someone is just a, a fantastic uh, social experience that I really do miss and we got to get back to. That's the thing, too, is that, you know, as as being a, a busy voice actor myself, I always wonder, like, where am I going to find the time to do these things? And for someone like you who has this amazing voiceover career a ginormous youtube channel where are you finding the time to craft these ideas is there do you, do you set time during the day in the morning i'm gonna i'm gonna write uh, ideas for what i'm gonna do on the youtube channel i'm gonna do one thing a day i'm gonna work on these auditions a day how do you manage both of these like mm, ginormous uh, careers yeah i mean for me it's just um when i have time uh outside of voiceover uh then i might you know, try to try to record a video or two, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, but like you've said over like the past couple of years, the, the voiceover has really ramped up. So, uh, I have less time to commit to the YouTube channel. Uh, a lot, a big, a major, like a, lot, a complaint that some people have is like, uh, I used to do a lot of skits and I don't really mm. do the skits as much anymore. Uh, they come very infrequently, but for me, you know, the YouTube channel rule number one is that it has to be stuff that I enjoy making, you know, sure. whether it's a board game review, whether it's, you know, even a stupid video, like, Oh, I'm eating 50 Kit Kats or whatever. Like, like it's gotta be <laughs> something that I still think is fun to do. And, uh, skits, like I just have to have that natural urge to make them, you know, versus like, Oh, I gotta make these skits because they get popular and get views. Like I don't, I have no attachment to that. Like what? Like, mm. I wouldn't do board game reviews if I cared about that. You know, like I <laughs> sure. Um, for me, it's first and foremost uh, making stuff that I enjoy, um, and uh, that's really kind of it. So yeah, these days it's when I'm not recording on a day. Um, I 
well, usually work on the channel, do do some stuff, and uh, it's been a uh, it's been good. Like, I think I've been able to keep up a good balance um, of both at the same time. Absolutely, some of your recent stuff is is extremely hysterical. I feel like if you're doing the work in the way that you just said, it's got to be things you're passionate about. That's why you have found success with your channel and continue to do so. Has it transitioned now in terms of ideas for, like I was saying, are you writing things down or is it as you're playing video games, are you finding ideas or, or you're throughout the day, you write something down in your phone like, oh, that's funny. I want to make a video about it. Oh, it's just whatever random shit comes into my mind. Can I swear on this, by the way? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Please. Um, just whatever comes to mind, like. I do have a like a word doc where if there's like oh that's that could be like a fun thing to do I I write it down in there. Um, mm. Also, one big thing that um, helps me a lot now, like actually for a long time, it was just me. But um, like a couple of years ago, uh, I hired a friend as my editor, uh, and so that has made it like possible. If I didn't have an editor, oh yeah, I I could not do both uh, at all. Um, so, or at least not nearly to the consistency of YouTube that I do currently, like it, mm -hmm. the channel would have definitely slowed down considerably without an editor. Oh, if you can find somebody who, who vibes with kind of your, your style, your genre, get your edits the way you want them and you can offload some of that. So you can stay doing the thing you enjoy doing the most, which is probably creating the videos or doing acting. Then I imagine that's got to be extremely mm. liberating and freeing. And uh, you want to just delegate as much mm. as you possibly can, I would imagine, especially for you, you know, to continue having time to voice act. Yeah, uh, I, I, he really does, I think, understand uh, like the tone i guess i mean for skits i still edit those myself but for not but for like 90 uh five percent of the videos that go on the channel it's it's him um and he's been great oh wow well that's still i mean having that that burden taken off of you so you can work on your other things has got to be so great and obviously for you you know you you know the jokes and the way that you want things to be cut and that's kind of a skill set within itself hey voice actors just wanted to take a quick second from this episode to let you know about an amazing opportunity we have for points of experience listeners we've teamed up with voice 123.com to get you all 15 percent off their premium membership starting with the 395 tier now they also offer a free membership where you can check it out and see what they're about but with the paid memberships you're going to get access to more auditions you're going to get your auditions faster you're going to get better support you can upload more samples all of that is going to be available with the paid memberships i've used it before in my career and i've curated my own client list that i've still worked with today i started making money it's also a great opportunity for you to take a portfolio of this paid work and present it to agents or managers and say hey look i'm professional i'm bookable i've made money doing this and here are the jobs that i did it on in tv radio commercial video games animation they have it all at voice123 so go to voice123.com slash plans slash pox and you're gonna get 15 percent off their paid memberships if you are a first-time premium package buyer or looking to upgrade into a higher tier that you've never purchased before i promise you it's a great place to start working so check it out and start booking today you are probably one of the biggest if not the biggest uh board game review uh creator i think on youtube where did that love come from uh, is it something you found growing up playing board games with your friends or was it later in life? Because I know I've seen many of your reviews because I've, I, I have a, a very deep love for board games, but there's nothing worse than buying a board game and realizing it's a big piece of crap um, mm. until you're hours deep in it and you've already assembled all these people. And you're like, well, that was a big waste of time. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, my enthusiasm for it, uh, it definitely was later in life, although it's funny, like, I loved board games as a kid. I uh, would get them from garage sales and all sorts of things and learn all the rules and play them. So uh, I just didn't know that there were, like, you know, designer board games for adults until this would have been, oh, man, maybe 2014 or something, 2013. Like, you know, like, uh, 
I remember specifically at Otakon in Baltimore, uh, I discovered a game called Forbidden Island, if you've heard of that game. I have. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a very fun little co-op game by the Pandemic creator. And we just bought it because <laughs> the cover looked funny, and we're like, yeah, let's just try this game. And then we loved it, and then I was like, oh, man, are there more games like this? This was just, I just grabbed it at a Barnes & Noble, and so it started this, I think a lot of people, it's the same way. They They have their gateway game, where they go, oh, board games can be fun even when you're an adult and they're not like all just like Monopoly. Uh, yeah. And so it just became this hunger of what are, what else is there? And then you seek out other, you know, game stores and then you find Board Game Geek, which is a great website for finding more board games. And and now yeah. at this point, I have I, re, I recently crossed the 1,000 different games played threshold. So, Whoa! Uh, yeah. So it, it's really <laughs> evolved over the years and has become probably my main hobby is uh, the board games. So rather than asking you the question that I'm sure everybody asks you, which is what is your favorite board game? I am going to ask, what is the game you would recommend to people who, uh, uh, a group of people, let's say four people that are, are fans of Catan maybe, mm. um, and they're looking for a similar experience? Hmm. Okay. Um, are they experienced players or relatively new? Let's go with uh, relatively new for the sake of probably what most people would say. Okay. And are they looking for something harder, simpler? Listen, I'm just kind of gauging the gauging the temperature mm. here. Like, Let's is go. this their their new players? Are like, I want to try something a little more. Or are they? What are they looking for? Okay, so hy let's play this hypothetical situation here. Me and my my three friends, we're, we've enjoyed Catan. We have a lot of fun playing, but we're ready to take this up a another notch, a little bit more difficulty, maybe a little bit more understanding of the rules if we have to, more elements involved. Mm. Um, like, what's that next step, you think, in terms of, like, getting more serious about the intricacies of, of what some board games have to offer? I would say... I'll, I'll I'll throw you a few titles, like just like on levels of sort of complexity, because um, when I think Catan, because I'm not I'm I'm actually not like a huge fan of Catan. Like I think it's all right. I think uh -huh. there are better games, some of which I'm gonna uh, say here. <laughs> um, if you want stuff like, let's say you like the sort of oh collecting materials and uh, like that sort of thing um you could tr like a pretty dense game but if you know like a do you know the game agricola yes yeah agricola is a german farming game uh it's all about getting those resources building up your home you know uh that sort of thing that's like definitely on sort of like the heavier end but if you're if you're kind of interested there's also like clans of caledonia is one kind of like in that vein i'm trying to think of stuff that's like a similar sort of theme to Catan, where it's that like ah, uh -huh. getting materials, like um, so. Like Agricola comes to mind, Clans of Caledonia, um, Power Grid. Power Grid is like a, a pretty good one as well. Um, yeah, those are those are some like meteor games to kind of like take you ab above um, uh, Catan, I guess. Ah, oh, those are ones I haven't heard of, so I'm definitely gonna have to check those out. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not a huge Catan fan myself either. I think there's like probably my favorite board game is Mice and Mystics, which is kind of like a, oh yeah yeah yeah, kind of, yeah a mixture of like a dungeon crawler meets um I don't really know how you'd classify it. I'm not the right person. It's like to, a story based yeah dungeon crawler. I I've only played yeah. like the first chapter like at a game store, but I enjoyed it. Mm. Um, yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It was, you know, it, it, it had all the elements of the things I like. like. Again, like dungeon crawling, kind of like a little bit of D&D uh, &D aspects to it, like role playing in a way where you're playing, uh, you know, you, you have like basically there's like dialogue that's happening between characters and story. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a, I, that's that's a, that's my jam. I wish there was more. I mean, I'm sure there are more games like that, but uh, I, uh, had I know that creator yet. did. Um, they might be more kid oriented but there was like stuffed fables i heard was pretty good um mm. he also did a game that i actually did a voice for uh called familiar tales uh same publisher as well plat hat games but i haven't i haven't played these games but um ah. I've, I've heard they're good um huh. so yeah are you it, 
are, would you say that you're, um, I mean, obviously you play a ton of board games as well. In terms of like video games and stuff, and even with anime, and are you, number one, I have to assume you're somewhat of a fan based off of maybe the, your, maybe the, your, the background your statues in the background. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to make that assumption right there. Um, do you feel that any of being a fan of like this world is, is helped you in this industry as a voice actor? Do you like, is whether that's just understanding the worlds or being able to understand like what they're looking for in terms of performance, do you feel like that helped you or maybe it doesn't really matter for someone looking to get into this industry? I think it helps. Yeah. I don't think it's required at all because, you know, there are plenty of very talented voice actors who know nothing about, you know, anime and games and kill it. Uh, yeah. But for me, oh, no. Yeah. There have definitely been like uh, properties that I've been fortunate to be a part of where I go in and they're like, so it's it's this whole. I'm like, no, I know I've I've I watched the I watched the whole show <laughs> or like, I know, <laughs> like and that wasn't even me like preparing for this. Like I. I, uh, one one of those actually uh, in recent memory was uh, I, I did a voice for uh, Odd Taxi. Um, uh -huh. If you know what that is, it's an anime yeah. from uh, last year that was really good and was kind of like the critical darling of last year. And I actually watched that with my friends uh, way before knowing that there was ever going to be a dub for it. Um, oh my so, gosh! So when I <laughs> when I got the sides, I was like. Oh shit! They're doing a dub for Odd Taxi, uh, and then when I went in, uh, the direct I just told the director, "Yeah, no, I've seen the whole thing." He's like, "Oh, great! That that <laughs> saves me some time. I don't need to explain anything." Um, so yeah, and I think in that's a very specific case, but even yeah. just getting the sense of like tone and you know like because especially as like a lot of people my age and or whatever who are nerds as well like if they can just even talk in the like oh it's kind of like this character from blank i'm like oh i know mm. what that is yeah you know that can be useful uh as well so yeah i think while not, definitely not a requirement by any means i think it has definitely helped in situations for sure yeah i think like you just said i mean there's so many times i get sides from things that are projects you don't even know what they are they have no title or nda mm -hmm. like crazy and they're saying certain things and you're like wait is that a person is that a place or is that a thing and you can kind of use your own context clues to kind of piece together oh <laughs> i know what midgar is this is final <laughs> fantasy right. you know and then you can kind of maybe gauge your performance to to meet that criteria or sure uh whatever that is um mm -hmm. You, you have worked um, not only doing YouTube, not only doing voiceover, you've also had the wonderful privilege, I'm sure for yourself as well, for everybody else who got to watch it, the Anime's Crime Division TV show where you worked with Crunchyroll and Rocket Jump. Mm -hmm. What? I mean, I'm a huge fan of Fre Freddie Wong. Obviously, he's the creator of uh, Video Game High School. Mm -hmm. Um an, an immense talent one of the best shows about kind of being a, a fan of video games or of, of that's been done throughout history I'm, I'm gonna say what what was the entire process of number one getting involved with that how did that even come to fruition mm -hmm. did you feel like you were like I, I mean let's start there how did how did that even happen uh I was I was friends with Freddie, and I remember at, I think it was a con we were at together. It might have been Crunchyroll Expo. He was just like, hey, so like Crunchyroll, we're going we're to make a show. Do you want to be in it? <laughs> and I was like, huh, sure. Uh, <laughs> if you think that would be a good idea. And he's like, no, yeah, you'll be great. And I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, yeah, I'm sure maybe that'll happen. Like, And then yeah. uh, I think like a month or two later, he's like, Okay, so we're shooting, and uh, we're trying to, can you come in like for like this week? And I was like, oh shit, it's actually happening. And also, I don't think I realized it was the lead character. I thought it was gonna be <laughs> like you know, I don't know, some other part. Um, so yeah, he just sort of asked me to do it. Um, and I, while I was intimidated because I had I didn't have a ton of live action experience at that point, uh, I was like. Freddie's, uh, the, this is like the best possible way to get my feet wet, you know? And yeah. I'm also the type of person where um, 
if I am presented with something that is intimidating, like from a creative standpoint, I just dive in the deep end and go, you know, I'll, I'll learn as I go. I'll be fine. Like, and uh, it's, it's, it's worked out. Like I, um, so for that, it just sort of, he thought I'd be a good fit and that's how it started. I mean, the show is, it's, it's, it's so hysterical and obviously tackling things that I think a lot of people who watch anime, um, or are video game fans enjoy. Um, is this, while vastly different from what a traditional anime or uh, video game might be, specifically anime, because it really is kind of shot in in a, in a way that is very similar to anime. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that you would be interested in doing more of? Is that kind of in your, like, oh yeah, I want to do more live action stuff that's in this vein, um, whether related to this or something completely different? Is that kind of something of interest to you? Uh, yeah, I think um, whenever I'm asked about this, I put it this way, like, uh, I've enjoyed what live action stuff I have done. And um, like, I've, I've, and I've been fortunate in that I haven't had a bad experience yet. Like, mm. it's a very different beast, right? I'd say the closest thing is like um, motion capture, like when I did for like God of War. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, being on a set, being, you know, memorizing your lines, memorizing your lines is the biggest thing. It's just, man, <laughs> we have such a luxury of just not having to do that. Like, yeah. Memorizing whole scenes. Ugh. so, but yeah, like I, uh, have always enjoyed the experiences I've had. Um, and, uh, uh but, the, I always go, if this last live action thing was the last thing I ever did, I, yeah. it wouldn't bother me. Like, because for me, voiceover is like, that's the dream and like what I really prioritize. Uh, like if I had my last voiceover job, I'd be, I'd be pretty bummed about it. But like, if I, for live action, I think it's also just more of like, I'm like, really, you want, you want me to, okay, like I'll, I'll do it. Like, <laughs> are you sure? Uh, that sort of situation um it's still very like dazzling to me you know I, sure. I'm, I'm not like whereas voiceover on the other hand is like i've described it as almost like a very comfortable uh hot tub like when i walk into a booth uh i'm rarely ever nervous you know i'm just very comfortable um in the beginning that wasn't the case you know when i was first sure. you know booking professional work but now i'm like yeah, this is my element. This is, you know, this is nice. I, 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 I'm very cozy. Live action is intimidating and scary, but fun. It, there's a, it does force you to flex different sort of creative muscles and things you normally don't have to think about, you know, in the voiceover space. So, uh, yeah. I, um, would, yeah. A any live action opportunities that come my way, I'm always game for, um, because it is it is fun and it is very different from doing voiceover. I mean, I have a very big background in doing uh, <laughs> on camera stuff in theater and mm. television. It's it's <laughs> when you're talking about uh, the difference of potentially having like a one hour session where you record like five episodes of uh, an anime mm -hmm. <laughs> versus like you're on set all day and you record what happens to be two minutes in yes. one show yeah like the whole, it's a, a vastly different beast and you have to be way like probably mentally for you it probably was like a big difference of sitting around on set and that whole hurry up and wait mentality of them lighting the set right it's just uh yeah it's, it's very different. it's very different like um anime crimes was kind of like a smaller crew so uh, there wasn't a whole lot of like just sitting in a trailer or anything like that. Like it was just kind of uh. like, um, you, you still, there was still waiting, but it, it, it was kind of more like a tight knit, but like I've done um, stuff that since hasn't, hasn't been announced yet, but like, like even like I just, what you were just saying, like, even for like a, I have like one scene, like a couple lines, but it's like, cool. You know, call time is uh, like 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. <laughs> And you sit in a trailer uh, until like 5.30 p.m. And it's like, all right, now it's time to go shoot. You know, it's like, I'm like, wow. Like if this yeah. were a voiceover session, I've had voiceover sessions and I'm sure you have as well, where you walk in, say one 
word. And it's like, okay, you're done. Thank you. You know, thanks. And- <laughs> Oh, that's the best part. I remember one time yeah, yeah, I went great. to a session. It was I, I, I. You go in sometimes because you know you very rarely get scripts beforehand, mm-hmm. so you just know like okay. Sometimes you get the character if yeah. you're lucky. Sometimes mm-hmm. you show up and they're just like okay, invent the voice right now based yep. off of the, the 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 voice that you're hearing from the original uh, adaptation of the or the original uh, whoever if it was Japanese hearing the the Japanese voice actor do it, and it's like okay, right now invent everything that you're gonna do on the spot, and then mm. sometimes like you said, it's literally one line. You're like, oh okay, so I stressed out all day about this, thinking <laughs> I was again, you know, yeah. you never you never really know. Um, what about creating for you? Is that something? that you're like obviously you're you're creating your own stuff doing your youtube but uh, is is creating your own um animated series something that is is of interest to you or doing something sim- similar to anime crimes division is that like um is that something knowing how good you are at production does that stuff interest you um i get asked that question a lot and for me i'm not one of those people who has like that dream project he's been dreaming to adapt his whole life you know there are people a lot of people like that who have like oh if i had the opportunity i would make this i would make this into a show um i do honestly think for me it's like i love acting i really love it i would love to help someone make their dream you know come Mm. true i think the closest i would maybe be interested in is like maybe like writing like um like i did I don't have a ton of like professional writing experience, but uh, when I did um, God of War, they I did directly work with the writers to write the scenes and develop the character and everything, and that was actually a very rewarding like process. Like I again, it was kind of like in live action. I'm like, really, you, you want me to what? You want me to write? I was like, okay, like if you if that's what you really want. Uh, and again, it was definitely intimidating, but. Um, yeah, it, it was quite creatively rewarding in its own way. So, uh, yeah, maybe like writing something or, um, I don't know if I like direct, there are aspects of directing that do seem really appealing. The main thing though, is just when people, who people, friends of mine who are directors, it's like, God, that takes up so much of your time. Like <laughs> yeah. you, you have like no free time. And I, I'm someone who does value my free time because I love board games. I love hanging out with people, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and I, and I have friends who are either showrunners or no showrunners. And it's like, yeah, that it sucks. It sucks a lot out of you, you know, having to be responsible for the whole thing. So there's nothing for me in my mind that I'm like, I, I want to sacrifice that much. And it also would take away from the acting, you know, like if I'm a showrunner on a show, uh, that's much less time I can dedicate to the acting. So, yeah, I I'm I think I'm definitely more like I like acting and I writing was fun, Uh, creating a whole thing like as the main guy, a showrunner. Yeah, I, I don't think I have the the passion uh, that is required for that job. Oh gosh, it's uh, it's time uh, life consuming because you have to dedicate yourself. I mean, like uh, people who might think like, oh yeah, I'll just do my voice acting on the side or whatever. It's like no, it's like you're day in day out having conversations with every department imaginable to make right. sure that that ship keeps getting steered. Um, going back to what you just mentioned, obviously with God of War, I don't know how much you can talk about it, but mm. you did mocap for that for that project, right? Can you talk mm-hmm. about your experience kind of um, for what some people might not be, be familiar with mocap in terms of, was that your first experience doing mocap? Um, mm-hmm. Can you kind of talk about what you, uh, what to expect for somebody who's entering into a, a motion capture stage? What were some of the fears you might have had or or uh, things that you thought would be scary and actually weren't? Like, what was that entire process like for you on a, such a tremendous title? Sure, sure. Um, for me, it was definitely, like, you know, I mentioned before, like, in most situations, I'm extremely comfortable and that was not the case for this. I was extremely nervous <laughs> uh, because it really is like live action. Like um, uh, I had a, so for I can't talk too much about details, but I can yeah. talk about the general what like doing the whole motion capture thing was like. Um, and so for me, uh, the biggest thing that's a very that's different is, you know, 
memorizing lines and I had no one else to blame but myself because I wrote <laughs> the lines. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, you idiot. Why did you write so many lines for yourself? Why and did I, I write this monologue? Yeah, exactly. Why <laughs> did you write, you know, at the time I was like, oh, you know, this is, and then like think, and then later it's like, great. Now I have to memorize all this. Um, yeah. So that was the one thing. Um, it is, it was also a similar experience of, uh, for I don't have a lot of, I don't have like extensive motion capture experience. That was basically my, my first and only foray into it. But yeah. uh, for that, uh, you know, I had a trailer and it was a lot of, there was a like sort of cast read of like scenes, um, not including mine. And then um, just sort of to get the, get the flow of the scene. And then it was a lot of just kind of waiting in the trailer and, uh, which uh, is like one of the weirdest departures from voiceover, you know, just getting paid to sit there and just, and in my case, worry, not worry, but like, you know, just go over the lines, go over the lines, go over the lines. Cause uh, I just really, you know, you don't want to fuck up. Right. You're like, I, I want to make sure I nail this. Um, and uh, the motion capture suit was fun. Like uh, uh, I had to do because um, it was like directly my movements, like, the whole like they scan you and like you have to do like these weird stretches and things like that like you know i i knew none of this so it was all very interesting uh to me going trial in. by fire yeah uh and they and they were all very like uh it was a very nice like uh crew and like set like and uh i got to work with um uh with with chris judge who's kratos and he was extremely mm -hmm. nice uh so i think yeah, it was a nice, very welcoming, supportive environment. Uh, so I think what I, I just needed, all I needed for my end was just, all right, just make sure you know your stuff. You know, make sure yeah. you memorize your lines uh, and anything else that you're not sure about what to do, just ask. You know, just ask them, you know, they'll gladly like help you out with anything like if you're not familiar with what you need to do on the set. Like they don't expect everyone to just know everything. Um, so yeah, that was sort of the general experience, I suppose. Was there anything in particular that you can remember, like, um, a, a specific instance where it's like, I wish I had experience with this or like, because obviously there's courses that people have where you can go and learn about motion capture. You can mm -hmm. get your own kind of reel done. Is there anything specifically where you came across, um, an instance where you're like, oh, I didn't know that. And I wish I had known that, um, something that the aspiring motion capture VO actor might be like, oh, that's a great nugget of wisdom. Mm, not really. I, I think what my, the, you know, I, I didn't take motion capture classes, but anime crimes division in a, in a sense was kind of like training for that because yeah. really motion capture is almost ex not exactly like it because you're you know wearing goofy outfits or whatever but <laughs> you're doing live action work essentially like you are you memorize your lines you go on sets you do whole run throughs and um yeah so i i think just just being aware of your physicality something that uh you don't necessarily have to do as much in a booth like i mean in a booth, I'm still pretty physical, but only like subconsciously. Like, you know, yeah. if, if something requires a stabbing, I am doing this. I don't know if you do the same thing, but I'm like, Oh, of course. <laughs> I, I'm very much in that. But with motion capture, it's like, okay, but now you're doing it for real. Like, you yeah. know, you can't just be miming it. It's like, okay, how do you actually getting actually into it? So I think whether it's a motion capture class or theater or uh, whatever you can do, like these classes that can help you get that. What is it like acting with your entire body? You know, yeah. uh, having the, pr being prepped for that, I think it, uh, is very um, important. And, and also they captured my face as well. So it was like, you know, that I wasn't as worried about because I think a lot of that just comes naturally. Uh, yeah. Facial stuff, but um, it's still something to, to keep in mind, I guess, uh, that you don't normally don't have to worry about in the booth. Well, I think that's all uh, uh, amazing insight because 
a lot of people, so, not a lot, so, some people do talk about pursuing voiceover as this kind of like, oh, I can, I don't have to worry about, you know, necessarily uh, like my body when I'm performing or, or having to, you know, memorize lines or having to do on camera stuff. But uh, motion capture is a, such a tremendous part of this industry. It's, and it's only getting bigger in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think we'll only be seeing more titles. Um, doing this and not only are you doing the performance of it but you're also doing the voice so yeah uh what a what a piece of the the market that you're missing out on if you don't have the 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 confidence or the skill set to kind of venture into that that territory so Mm. like you said getting into getting into a a theater class or um taking an on-camera class so you can know what it's like when there's a camera on you when Mm. you're doing a line and you got to do a close-up and there's like five people standing behind you and it's like wait i'm supposed to cry right now all these five people are like analyzing my every move or or whatever Mm -hmm. it is so yeah i mean that's i think uh uh, for me having my my theater background is what has helped me more than anything and it's also again and i'm sure you see this in most of the work that we're doing they want performances that are are natural and something very similar to what people would call tv acting mm-hmm. they want performances that seem grounded sure. and real um so what better way than to to, to train in all facets of acting mm-hmm. however you want to classify that right 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 <laughs> um is there anything else that you have coming up that you are excited about that you can talk about yes but i can't talk about that yeah. <laughs> yeah yes to the first that, part no to the second yeah part. that's always the problem right it's like you're like mm, you know i got all these things and it's like but i can't say anything and you know, oh gosh yeah and some of these things is like you're like years right you're like you're all like but i just can't say anything yeah but i worked on that, a project where they told me uh i i recorded it last year and they said all right yeah so this will be uh uh, this will be done either the end of 2023 or the start of 2024 i'm like i don't know if i'll live to that long yeah Yeah, will the world still be around then yeah who knows (laughs) the beautiful uh nature of this of this beast that you 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 could have literally a week where 10 projects come out and Mm -hmm. you've been sitting around doing nothing for a while and then you've got all this fun stuff to to kind of talk about which uh Mm -hmm. i mean at the very least i know everybody's super excited about this new god of war game um i'm 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 so excited to uh for for anything more to to come out about that and obviously when you can share more talking about it. it sounds like such a fantastic experience you had very rare you get to work on such a high profile project and have such um uh, creativity involved mm. as an actor i feel like that's a very rare thing and and what a what a privilege and what a gift huh no yeah it was definitely unexpected uh they i god it was they asked me to come in years ago at this point this was a, quite a while ago and i didn't know what it was for and uh they sort of we just i was like oh maybe it's just like a general you know, general meeting just to kind of discuss like potential whatever uh and they were like yeah so we want uh so they kind of sort of detailed stuff and they're like or no, no and the first thing they were like is so i'm sure you can guess what this is for and i was like nope and then they like <laughs> pointed they pointed at like the the screen i was like i was like god of oh i was like because a, a second god of war had not been announced yet uh, yeah, so i was yeah, like yeah oh okay um and uh yeah they uh wanted me to write as well and i was like if if that's what you know it's such a rare opportunity i was like you gotta say yes right even if you're like yeah the same thing with like anime crimes division you gotta just say yes just say yes and Mm -hmm. you'll figure it out uh so yeah i i'm very thankful to them for the the opportunity it's been it was a really rewarding uh experience and often the most scary the 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 scariest things often are the most rewarding as i'm sure you found out the things that when there's that fear involved it's off like when you when it goes well Mm. (laughs) when it goes well uh you have such that sense of satisfaction and fulfillment um Mm -hmm. 
We've got one last thing here on the Points of Experience podcast. We have people write in questions, and um, uh, we've got somebody here writing in for for you today. Uh, Joe, why don't we uh, see what we got in store? So we got a question from Krasheki. I hope Alrighty. I'm saying that correctly, but Krasheki wants to know how do you really get into voiceovers? Do you happen to have any tips or advice for someone just starting out? Like how to break in? Is that the, yes? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we've kind of touched upon it on this podcast, but a lot of it is start making stuff, right? Like start making things that showcase your skill uh and put them put them online and just keep making stuff and also i always tell people meet other people who are also aspiring actors like uh i think a lot of a lot of um aspiring actors focus too much on like oh like can i asking like an established actor hey can you can you give like listen to this can you do this for me and uh it's like i don't know who you are like i'm sorry i can only <laughs> vouch for people that a i know are good people and b are you know i can vouch for their skill right like i i unfortunately cannot vouch for someone i don't know um but i think what people a lot of people don't realize is some of the most sort of enriching valuable uh networking you can do is people who are in the same boat as you who are also like working or working up or aspiring or, and, or, you know, starting out because not only can you, you know, share the same, you know, your experiences with each other to help each other. Uh, but you will find that like, for me, I, a lot of people that I are my age who are working and people I'm seeing sort of coming up now, I'm like, I know all of them. Like they were all in the same sphere as me, like in the indie scene, in the, you know, uh, even in the fan dub scene, like all like they, they just kept at it. Like a lot of people who have just been doing it forever are like, you know, finally getting their due, finally make, you know, making their, you know, it's funny. People go, Oh, who's this new uh, voice actor? It's like, no, they've been doing voiceover for like 10 years. Like, you yeah. know, just because you don't know who they are, doesn't mean they have no experience. Right. Um, so yeah, my, my biggest advice I can give to you is make stuff right now. If you don't have any experience acting, you got to get experience acting and get to a level where you're good, you know, and that, that can be done through a lot of people say theater, improv classes, all that. That's all great too, but also just make shit on your own, right? Uh, make shit and then meet other people who are also doing it. And that's really how you do it. Some people are lucky. They fall into this but i think these days more and more people including myself had to grind our ass off and meet and constantly you know meet people and you know build that up and level grind and that's just well that's just what you got to do that's how you, that's the nature of the business it's it's very much a concentrated effort i think to pursue a, a career in voiceover where many people and the thing that we often hear sometimes is uh i'm sure you get the questions about this all the time is you know i'd love to get started in voiceover i think that'd be like fun to do as a hobby and and that now to like consider voiceover a hobby it's like you got to be a celebrity in order mm -hmm. for you to just be like every so often i want to do an animated movie yeah. Like there's no other world where you can really uh, approach this this career as um, kind of like a, a, a side thing unless you expect the results to be that of doing kind of, you know, I don't know, maybe local market commercials or mm -hmm. it, it's just too hard to to, to break into this industry. Um, and I'm going to double down here on that question for them. I'm going to, I'm going to double the ante up and ask for that same advice that you'd have for somebody looking to pursue YouTube to, to mm. get started in YouTube. What would you give, what would be the piece of advice looking for them today in 2022, um, given your, your experience and the su success you had, um, starting out you know, some years ago, what would you be, what would be the advice for somebody today, uh, for today looking to start a channel? God, oh man, YouTube. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think, uh, what's most important with that is you just got to make things you enjoy because if you're going to try to go into YouTube, uh, to become like a YouTube famous person, 
oh man, the odds are so against you. Like I, that was never any inkling for me of a possibility. Like, yeah, I did not do YouTube because I thought I would be successful at YouTube. I did YouTube because it was for voiceover, right? Uh, for making stuff for voiceover. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say if you are someone who you want to sort of make a name for yourself on YouTube or what, instead of worrying about making a name for yourself, you just got to make stuff you like. Uh, and then if you're very lucky and or fortunate and like people will find, you know, and you can start to build an audience. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I would say that's even less likely <laughs> than getting into voiceover like mm -hmm. at least with the voiceover uh it's kind of like a smaller community so like if you're really good you can get noticed like it's still very hard to get in but it, there's i think there's a chance <laughs> with youtube i think instead of worrying about like that's gonna be my career just go this is something i really enjoy doing even if i never make a single cent off of it and then if yeah. you happen to make any money off of it consider that a victory <laughs> because it is <laughs> it, it is such a hard <laughs> hard difficult i've seen you know a lot of people really struggle even people who have like established audiences struggle uh mm. so um i that's the only advice i can really give is make something you like to make and that's got to be what and then if you're lucky it can maybe turn into something else. Yeah, do what you love. I think it sounds simple when you, but it, it's so true. I think so many people miss out on that important uh, factor. They try to do what they think will be successful or go mm. viral as opposed to just doing what they enjoy. And what often you find out is that a lot of people enjoy the same things that you enjoy. And if exactly. you're creating that type of content, it will amount to an audience and hopefully uh, a success by the quantitative terms that YouTube yeah. likes to use with subscribers. And, and I think people respond well to when they see that you're having a good time, they feel that that's an, an infectious feeling that can really draw people to your, to your stuff. Uh, whereas, you know, some channels like they get big, but then they start to make content they, that they have no passion for. They just, just mm. grind out stuff. Uh, you can sense it. You really can sense if the person making the stuff is genuinely enjoying it or not. So that's why, you know, even if you do like make some money off of it, if you don't enjoy it, it's just gonna be miserable. You gotta at your at its core, you know, enjoy the process of what you're doing. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Sung one, thank you so much uh for joining us here on the podcast. It's been an absolute treat. I think people are gonna get so much insight into um gosh your your in, insane um talent success and uh what you know what what goes into i mean uh, to, to to tackling both of these insane <laughs> careers that we decided to to pursue i mean mm -hmm. voiceover and voice acting and and youtube they are our behemoths and you are absolutely uh crushing both of them um i look forward to to hearing more of the stuff you're in um playing some of the games that come out and uh all that stuff i i, I really really appreciate you taking the time to to sit here and chat with us and for everybody to listen Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until the next time we get to uh, to conversate, hopefully in person once uh, um, these things, you know, that was the, that was the big bummer. We didn't get a bell. We didn't get a bell premiere, but you know, mm. hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to meet each other in person at some point. Um, sure. But this will have to do for now. Thank you so much, someone. Well, uh, that might be one of the biggest privileges uh, that I think I've, I've had to date in terms of um, talking with people in this industry. He is, someone is, gosh, an, an absolute talent in so many different ways uh, to, to be as successfully as he is on YouTube. And uh, I, I hope people see that the grind and determination that he put in based off of that tumbler yeah is, is it, it would it, I, it would be embarrassing for anybody to be like oh you know that successful youtuber became a voice actor it's like he was so right people don't see how long people have been putting in the in the in the hours to to get where they are 
I went back to tw- I clicked on 2015. I was like, oh, this has to be like the first year. Yeah. And then he's like, no, it was 20 stuff in 2012. And then I went to 2012 and there's like 100. Million <laughs> like, oh, okay. You know, what's funny he's is I actually really doing it. I looked at his uh, YouTube. I like went down that rabbit hole that he's probably yeah. too embarrassed to do. And I watched like some of his <laughs> earliest YouTube videos that are there. Uh, he was like making short films, I guess, for class. He did a, a scene, a shot by shot of uh, Ferris Bueller in like 2006. Oh, wow. And um, I think that's great that he has uh, uh, those those videos up and that you can kind of see where people come from. Excuse me. I don't know if you guys heard that burp, if that's going to come through on the, on the microphone there but you know uh, i kind of burped too it was it was like a like a, yeah, a simultaneous burp yeah, when we sync maybe synchronize both burp? of them will go through but oh uh, we'll have to bump up the gain so people can hear <laughs> uh the burp power on that um you so so what was the video that you came across that kind of introduced you to sung one do you remember like so the skits for me is what really gets me yeah like because I used to do stuff like that too. I used to make like YouTube skits and I know how it's like when you're thinking of something that's so funny to yourself. And then when he mentioned it, like, oh, I only do content that like I really truly believe in and I like and I feel like is funny. Yeah. I immediately was like, yep, yeah, that's how you make a good skit. Because if you're trying – like, all right, uh, you have seven seconds. Be funny right now. Yeah, exactly. How do you? When, but when you get the idea, when you get like everything he does for those type of videos is just. There was a one where he he um is talking about the anime characters, and trying to convince your friend that the main character gets stronger and cooler. Uh-huh. And then he's like starting in the first episode, and he's like, "Oh, I'm a little wimp," and then you're just like, "Wait, he gets he gets better. Like, don't worry." Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then like it, you know. It's it's so crazy because and this is another thing that we didn't really talk about is that when you go to his YouTube page, his most successful videos are the ones that are like seven seconds long, yeah, 20 seconds Vine. long, one minute long. So like even though it's not Vine, like that's what I was cur- – I mean we kind of talked about it. They're not – they weren't made for Vine, but it's kind of that same workflow that he uses. And I think people get so hung up on like an amazing idea and most of his stuff is skits he's filming in his house with very minimal costumes yeah like the one with like the anime villain who's actually helpful it's just like he's wearing a piece of like the printer paper around his face or the mustaches it's that's that's comedy to me it's not like it's just the idea Mm -hmm. you don't have to have a real prop it's just good enough to have like as long as the general idea goes through it's like i think that's what's so cool about youtube and tiktok is that you can just be i I think people get hung up on this idea that we have to be extremely like produced things have to have big budgets and it's got to look amazing when there are so many people who just like i have a funny idea that i think is relatable and that's what i'm gonna do it's how i'm gonna make it how do you think it even got popular? They didn't do it with big budgets. They did video videos with like those cameras that are this big and like this wide. And, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> they have to look through the. They have to <laughs> look through the the little eye thing. Toaster so, oven sized cameras that yeah. I I had one when I was growing up. My, exactly. my mom. Yeah, I used to do skateboarding videos on that thing. Gosh, um, yeah. I feel like that's I feel how like, it got popular. Yeah, you don't yeah. need any of that stuff. And everyone has got a. Everyone has a a, a, yeah. a a movie camera in in their pocket or on their desk or charging right. wherever it is. You have if you have an iPhone or a good Sam. Do you have an iPhone? Do you have an iPhone? Are you are you an Android? Yes, I do. Okay, okay. I All right, we're, we're at least we're on the. How dare you about this? Well, hey, listen. Some <laughs> people like to argue that the Androids have uh, better cameras or the Samsungs or whatever it is, but uh, either way. These things, I remember there's a film for anyone who doesn't know. It was, uh, it won one of the Sundance Film Festival awards. It was called Tangerine. It was shot entirely on an iPhone. So even if people have their doubts about like just waking up and making stuff, like whether it's you want to be a filmmaker, a voice actor, you can literally record voiceover into your phone. 
I have a friend yeah. who's going to actually be, I'm not going to, we have a, we have, I have a friend who's going to be on the podcast with us and they are, um, an, uh, an audio engineer. So they might've been on it or it depends on when we, when we release this or not. But, uh, at any, at any rate, they, they, they've had to do what they call ADR, which is basically when we do dubbing over these animes, yeah. it's like ADR, you're doing the audio dialogue replacement, I believe is the name of it, or there's some other fancier word, but that's what everybody calls it ADR. And he's had to have people on big budget movies or in video games or promos and all that stuff. They've recorded it into their phone. And they're able to, you know, clean it up on their end. So people are always so worried about it not being perfect. Um, and I've been guilty of it, but it's uh, just do it. Just do it. Like Nike, just do it. Or, can, you know, the Shia LaBeouf. Uh, <sighs> I, see, <sighs> I think that should be the standard. Just do it. Okay, so we're gonna we're 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 gonna try and get uh, Nike out of the just do it business, and we're gonna yeah. only associate that with Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, I yeah, I think so. Okay, I think that'll be a hard uh, uh, legal battle to undergo, but you know who knows? Maybe the yeah, internet will fine. support us on that. Uh, well, that was so fun. I mean, I didn't get to talk about half of the other things. I wanted to talk about Borderlands. Him working uh, on like Craig of the Creek. We also worked on uh, the Yakuza series together. Um, well, he lo- worked on Lost Judgment, and all that stuff. But um, gosh, what a what a what a what a nice guy! Um, what yeah. a what a nice guy! And loves board games, a dying art, I say. Board games don't get enough love, and I'm glad that we've got people like him uh, out there still doing reviews, still getting people interested because, like, I mean. Now what? What do we, what do, we do? We play board games digitally now. Yeah. Is that like? Yeah. Is that what I we? Wanted, yeah, I mean, I wanted to ask him that. Like, I wanted to say, hey, like, do you do you consider a good board game to be a board game that if you want to physically hurt the people around you, then it's a good board game. Like in Monopoly, <laughs> where like they buy your property and you like really for a moment you're thinking about hurting them and you're yeah. like. Well, so is that <laughs> is that what classifies good board games? Is it like you you really feel it in the moment being there? I think for some people they they definitely get to enjoy. It. Well, I mean, listen, that means th- that's a big thing for me. The stakes are high, you know. And if people are taking exactly. the game seriously, you know yeah. that they, they've they've got that property you need. They took your cow, they took your milk. Yeah. You need that yeah. milk to feed to feed your your chickens, and now your or chickens they sent you whatever. to jail. Yeah, like you sent me to jail. I'm. Yeah. You ever play Sheriff of Nottingham? It's a it's a, a board game. You ever play that? No. Gosh, it's such a good game. The, the whole concept of it is is basically like you're trying to import goods into this town, and the sheriff stops you. You take turns being the sheriff, um, and you you can basically lie or like do like uh, uh, mischievous acts, and you're basically trying to smuggle in contraband into the town. And you could be like, all right, listen, I'm gonna let you smuggle in those uh, carrots, but you gotta. You gotta give me a pass when I'm trying to oh, smuggle yeah. my elk, you know? Like yeah. so it's uh uh man, so much fun playing that game and, and I haven't gotten to play a board game in, in a in quite a time. You know, there's a lot of places around uh Brooklyn. It, they're opening up like places where you just go and play board games. And I think it's like genius. Oh dude, there there's they're they're all over the city. There's a place called yeah. um Hexagon. In, in uh, on the Upper West Side, and then there's a place that I used to go to and play Magic the Gathering all the time. It's called the Uncommons, down on West Fourth Street near NYU. And we used to go. You pay like five bucks, and you could. They have like a whole library of board games, and uh, you can get you can get a beer, and you can buy snacks and food, and uh, yeah. I mean, gosh, uh, t- that that's that's a good time for me, man. Me too. Yeah, I'd like to. Well, hopefully we'll get to do one with Sung Won soon. Uh, that would be that'd be a yeah. real pleasure. Well, this was a fun episode, huh? Awesome, dude. I knew he was going to be awesome, but... Yeah, he, he did not disappoint. Um, yeah. All right, then. Well, thank you all for listening, hanging out, having a good time with us. Hope you all learned something. Um, it is our, our job here to to dig deep and, and ask questions that are going to help you all aspire to do whatever you were going to do. So hopefully if you're an aspiring voice actor or YouTuber or Vine, Dreamer. anything, anything, I mean, he does it all. Uh, hopefully you learned something here. And uh, if you have questions, please email 
P-O-X podcast at gmail.com. We're going to be answering your questions live. Hopefully, um, we'll be able to do some other fun things soon as well. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe on all the platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon. Am I forgetting anything else? Can you subscribe in your local Just hit newspaper? all the buttons. Yeah, hit just, just, just spam the keyboard <laughs> on, uh, on all the uh, – Everything. On everything. And uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. So, um, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Points of Experience podcast. This episode was hosted by Paul Castro Jr., engineered by Joe Scali, edited by Keith Neku Lawson, produced by Samit Durg, and brought to you by Neat Microphones and Turtle Beach. Uh-huh.